OK, so I'm here to talk to you about how to turn knowledge into learning using artificial intelligence. Uh, my name, um, thank you, Michael, introduce me as Emil Reiser Weston. Um, uh, I have a master's in uh, work design and ergonomics uh, and, uh, and a degree in psychology. So um, the knowledge you'll get from me um, will be uh, less technical and more practical on how to use AI to really affect change within your organization. Um, OK, so it, it's an introduction. Um, uh, I'm the managing director of Open Elms. Open Elms is a company that's been going since 2003, building upon its, its, its systems such as learning management system and content authoring system. Um, we are the number one rated learning management system and authoring system um, uh, in the world on um, SourceForge and Slashdot rating platforms. So what we do is, is easy to use. It's um, uh, people like it. It's, it. it's highly rated. But what I've, what I've come to talk to you about is Open Elms AI, which is the world's first AI powered e-learning generator. Um, there are tools out there which, which um, create learning content, um, but this is different. What this is, is this is a, a cradle from grave. It's uh, from a prompt to uh, completed e-learning, uh, designed e-learning at a professional standard um, using AI. And so this is something that we've been, we produced um, uh, the last six months. And as to date, we haven't seen anything in the world like it. Um, OK, so why am I here? Um, OK, so let's to answer this question, how to turn knowledge into learning. using Artificial intelligence knowledge. Uh, knowledge is any um, learning, co uh, any content uh, that comes out of uh, an academic institution. So that could be academic journals. Um, it could be lecture notes, um, research papers, um, uh, uh, dissertations and content from, from MOOCs. It's really anything that's coming out of the university or, or, or an educational establishment, any knowledge based research um, that you can turn into information that can seed an artificial intelligence. So how do we populate this AI, uh, the AI? Um, we take all this information and we can put it into our AI engine. Now, for this, we propose Open Elms AI, um, which is a tool that creates e-learning, creates chats um, systems, uh, but it also takes that information and encodes it. And, and so an AI can understand the information and use it um, to um, affect change. So let's see how that's done. Um, the Open Elms AI system has an ability to insert documents into, into it. So what you can do is you can upload your documentation. You can categorize it by subject, topics, etc. And it's really the categorization is up to you. But what that what that does is it means you've got a structured format for populating the AI with your knowledge from your your academic institution what we then use is an engine uh, now the engine uh, this we what we use is llama 2 um it's it's uh, an open source engine created by facebook uh, and what that does is it then puts the intelligence into into the process so it uses your knowledge and it puts the intelligence into the process to um, uh, power our learning chat engines all, the, all those good things that come with it the advantage of llama 2 i suppose something like chat gtp is that it, it is in essence, free to use. I mean, you have to power your servers and pay for electricity and stuff like that, but that you're not paying per use to a third party company. So that really sort of, sort of brings the power of what you the, 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 the opportunities of what you can do with the AI and really broadens your options available to you. OK, so we have our, our knowledge uh, and we have our AI engine, which we which we can populate. Now, what learning can we apply this to? How can we create learning out of this? Now, Open, um, Open, a Open Elms AI has um, a number of different options, um, and really, the, 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 you know, they're limitless, the, the, the type of things you can do. Um, but in essence, they can be categorized in three ways. So first of all, there's an online tutor. And I know you've, you've looked at these elements already in the conference over the last three days. So you can use the AI to power your own bespoke online tutor, to deal with your own topics of, of, uh, um, that you're dealing with at the university. You can also have an API input. So what this does is this will empower data management systems, systems within the university, and you can even use it to sell to third party organizations to power their knowledge management systems, answer questions, et cetera, based on your knowledge and your research within your organization. And thirdly, um, which is probably the most unique thing, and this is what I've come here to show you today, is we can produce e-learning. So from a single prompt using your knowledge, you can produce tuned, finely tuned learning to your uh, to your organization and really you can take this thing um this e-learning concept which has been traditionally been the um the, the domain of 
corporates dealing um, teaching repetitive compliance type training you can use it use this for very finely tuned um, uh, training needs or sorry learning needs just because it's so easy to do on your existing content and cheap as well <clears throat> okay sorry um, so just just to summarize that um, so the one-to-one -one tutor experience using AI you can have uh, an online tutor um, so when I was at university many many years ago um, you had a tutor session once a week and you would go to that tutor session armed with some questions many of which you would have forgotten throughout the week and you come back with many answers and then you forget it on the way back um where where an online tutor excels is that that knowledge from the unit your your, your organization can be used in a tutoring uh, context in a just-in-time basis so it will achieve the, the 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 effect of leveling up people that are being left behind um by by, by certain subjects they can go to their tutor they can get that knowledge and they can then level up to everyone else um, within the organization or within within the, the tutoring group um, you can integrate knowledge into systems so with the apis you can integrate knowledge into your systems and you can sell that knowledge to third-party systems this is a great advantage in that you're selling knowledge now rather than uh, having a brain drain of people with that knowledge going into third-party systems so um, you can directly sell that that that's uh, the research um, the academic papers everything produced by your organization you can sell as a product now um, uh, you can always be in a, like an AI factory um, that sells your specific knowledge on specific subjects to organizations um, and also learning resources attuned to curricula so um, you have your curricula you have your your your, your learning that goes behind it. so you have your knowledge and your research that goes behind it and you can sell learning resources specific to your organization to other uh, academic um, establishments to, um, um, to to industry uh, and you can also obviously use these to teach your own pupils as well and that frees up resources for, for research and stuff like that so um, this is the system uh, you have your knowledge and you have your AI and then at the very top, we have our output. So we have our online tutor, we have our API output, and we have our e-learning. But where is the moderation? Where's the human element in this? Well, to, to answer that question, um, the knowledge that has been poured into your AI um, needs a degree of training, needs a degree of overview, because AI systems, when they go wrong, they go wrong uh, with a lot of notoriety and, you know, Things come up, and you know, it's very simple questions would um, uh, would be would be uh, taken out of context, and then you know, you'd have a PI disaster. So you've got to be make sure that there's a human element that moderates um, the system. So here is our here is our uh, PhD student, and he is a moderator of the system, and we have an interface that allows you to do that. So when the knowledge goes into the AI, it forms a series of questions and answers, which which can then be used to respond to any question. Uh, also, questions that go into the system from um, uh, users, um, users of the system, um, also go into a data log, which can also be approved and ranked accordingly. So if any of these answers aren't quite right, you can then go in, you can edit them, and you can rate them accordingly. So your AI will grow over time, it will get better and better and better, um, and it allows your, uh, your, your, your spoke knowledge to go into the AI and it really be um, a credible sellable product at the end of it so the ai system is now complete we have our, uh, our our knowledge at the bottom we have our ai system which then turns into various different learning concepts with the, with the moderators in the middle but now let's answer the, the question of what i've come here to talk about um let's see how we can create uh, professional standard e-learning using ai um, uh, using the system called OpenMZ AI. Now the process is is a four-step process. Uh, first of all, we have a prompt. Now a prompt could be an uploaded document. It could be uh, Cartesian philosophy. It could be a sentence like this, or it could be a paragraph. It's whatever you want in order to seed the learning uh, the le the learning um, course. You can then say that you want the length of the course. Should it be a bite-sized learning? Should it be in-depth learning? And you can choose things like having a quizzes at the end of it um, to verify knowledge and you can then uh, also, also say whether you want to have voiceover on that or not as well. Once uh, that's done the, the AI gets to work and it creates 
various different options for the learning. So it will create various different screen options you can choose from, um, and it will create the content, it will create the design as well, uh, it will add animations, and it even gives you the ability to create your own um, uh, image content on the fly as well. Um, and the system is designed with our own design heuristics inside it. So um, in creating the e-learning, it does the same thing that we do. It looks at the imagery, it looks at areas of the, the text would go in, it looks at animations, and it designs it accordingly. And that's very unique in what, in what it can do. We also have uh, our top rated um, editing system. So once that's created, you can then edit the content thereafter. No AI generated content should be in a box and locked up and then that's it. You should always have the ability to go in and change the content to suit your requirements. And, and in changing the content, voiceovers changed, everything like that automatically changes. So we use AI not just in the, in, the, in the generation of the script, we also use AI in the image generation, the voiceover generation, everything like that. So it makes it very malleable to changes. Uh, when you want to make them. Having done that, you can then publish it. You can publish your course. And this whole process is very, very quick. Um, with an average course, if you're the subject matter expert, if you know what you're talking about, it needn't take more than 20 minutes to produce uh, an hour, hour and a half course using the system. So let's show you the system. Let's show you how it works. So we'll just going to access the system and um, we'll show you how to do, create um, a uh, an e-learning course. So what I'm going to do first of all, just to show you how the, the process is, I'm going to create a very quick one. Um, I've created another one earlier today, um, but I'm just going to create a bite-sized one to show you the process rather than because if it was if I were to do a larger one, it would take about ten minutes to process, and then we'd all be sitting around looking at the ceiling doing nothing. So I'll just re generate a very sh short one, and then I'll go into the larger one, which I've which I've prepared earlier, and show you the process of actually producing e-learning from that. So what I've done here is I've, I've put interject from the social psychology. You can do anything you want to um, in there. You can say you can upload documents as well. But this is a very, um, a very brief course. Interject from social psychology is bite size. It'll just be a few, a few screens, and I can generate that. I've got a quiz. And I've got voiceover for tech. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm processing it, and you can see that thing, that thing there's processing it. And what that's doing is it's uh, selecting imagery. It's creating animations, it's designing the screen, it's putting, uh, it's designing, it's creating the content as well. Um, and it's basically doing all those things at the same time to produce uh, a preview of the learning, which you can then go ahead and create e learning from. So just let that process, process go. Um, as I say, this process takes um, uh, about 10 minutes uh, for a larger course. And it should shouldn't take very long at all for a shorter one. It's actually taking longer than it usually does, but we'll just let it go. Um, in fact, what I'll, I'll do in the meantime, while that's while that goes, is I'll show you one we did earlier. Okay, so this is um, this is a course introduction to social psychology. And I have to have to have to um, stress that this is created not on a trained AI. This is done using a general AI. So the content of this is very generic. It's not tuned to a particular um, psychology department, uh, etc. So we're just loading it in now. Uh, it looks like I may. Oh, there it is. OK, so um, sorry, it's, it's it's very slow at the moment. It's not usually this slow. Um, OK. So what we have have here is uh, is, is basically um, a uh, preview of the course with lots of different um, uh, screens available for us. And it's all created this from the AI. So um, if we go if we go here, we can choose different options. So if we choose, for instance, um, another option, we can see the woman go um, uh, on the other side of the course, on the other side of the screen. This one, she appears here, et cetera. So what the system is doing is it's looking at the content, looking at where it's positioned, positioning it accordingly, and uh, putting the, the the video content in the right place. Um, next screen introduction. Here we are. Um, an interesting journey through the field of social psychology. If we notice, if we select different backgrounds again, it will change the the, the information for us. It gives you various different options available to you. So here we've got um, people people chasing each other, whatever that may be. Um, but if none of this, uh, for, uh, at the AI standpoint, is 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 appropriate, then you can select this button. And it will select a uh, an AI AI image directly for you. Um, so you've got that option of using AI on the fly while you're looking at this preview of the course. Um, 
scrolling down, we have defining social psychology. Um, you may decide that this this uh, screen isn't appropriate, or uh, sorry, the content isn't appropriate, or you need m need more content. What we can do then is is um, select to expand that area. So you can choose what screens have more have more content in them and expand them accordingly. So here you can see, just going back to this screen here, we've select we've selected to look at the content, define an AI generated screen from scratch, and it's generated this on the fly, basically based on this content here. Um, here, this, this is the other screen we've, we've, we've uh, played around with. So here we've expanded the content and you can see we've got more content on there. So going through this, you can take look at your e-learning and you can uh, expand it in, in accordance with your, your requirements. Now the content doesn't have to be exactly right because what we're going to do is edit it later. But once you've completed your course, you can check the questions, see that they're all right. And then having done that, you can press create e-learning. And that will now create the e-learning uh, for you. Um, OK, so here we've created the e-learning and it's here, Introduction to Social Psychology, and there's the e-learning created for us. Now, having done that, we can then uh, run that e-learning. We can then share it with others. We can download it and put it onto other learning management systems. Um, uh, and we can also edit the, edit the contents as well. So here I'm now going to open up the course and edit it. And this is the next step in the process. So we've had our prompt. We've created um, our course on social psychology. We've played around with a few options using the AI. And now we can edit it ourselves. So here what we have is a, is a preview of the course, which you can flick through and you can edit it accordingly. If you want to change any of the content, uh, you can do that. Um, and you can change, you can click on here so auto narrator is selected. And what that means is that this will now be re-narrated with whatever content you changed there. And you can see it's a very easy, it's easy as changing a PowerPoint slide, um, changing the e-learning um, uh, that's in here. If you want to edit anything, um, such as imagery or whatever, you can double click on it um, and you can open up uh, a library of images which you can search. There are around 10,000 different images in the system and that, that, that's building all the time. But all what you can do is you can upload your own imagery as well. So you're not um, constrained to whatever we have within the system. You can add your own animations, add your own video. So say for instance, here for instance, if we wanted to add our own YouTube video on um, social psychology, uh, we can search for social psychology video. We can assert that this can be one that we produced ourselves. And we can add that in there like so. So very quickly you can produce e-learning that um, is uh, tailored precisely to whatever requirements you have. Um, and as I say, this this e-learning would be created using your own AI. So it should reflect your own view on social psychology um, rather than uh, standard textbook stuff. So it's, it's very nice in that you're actually selling e-learning, which is specific to whatever in, uh, academic institution you come from. So that's that's how we edit the content. Um, if I close that. Um, so yes, so, so you've got your social psychology. As I say, you can distribute it in any way you want. You can put it into your own learning management system or you can, you almost in, you can always integrate it into an open arms learning management system as well. OK, so just to carry on um, with this, uh, what does it mean? What does this mean to academic institutions? Um, for starters, and the most obvious thing is rapid high quality course materials. Um, traditionally, as I say, e-learning has been something that corporations have used. Um, very dull, not engaging. What we're proposing is something that instantly produces high quality e-learning course materials for your organisations. And this opens up exact anything we can do with e-learning. Before e-learning would have been too labour intensive to implement in a rap rapidly changing um, uh, academic institution with respect to the, the, the content. But here what you can do is you can produce stuff every three months, every six months, which which reflects up to date um, state research that, w that goes on within each organisation. Uh, we can increase the education offering because we're bringing stuff online. Uh, all of a sudden we have an e-learning offering that doesn't necessarily have to be tied to whichever location you're at. So you can have you can brand your organization and sell that across the world. So we should be in a position where anyone in the world can benefit from high class education, regardless of uh, of where they're based. 
marketing we can use these tools for marketing so we can use the we can use the the, the quiz uh, engine we can use the uh, sorry the, the chat engine we can use uh, learning materials uh, for marketing purposes so all of a sudden you can like give free little courses to people so that they know about your organization and they want to sign up maybe maybe going to do to do a degree course um, uh, one day at your organization but they've already become familiarized with your um, with your organization Knowledge management. AI is fundamental to knowledge management. Um, when uh, so many times in academic, in academic um, uh, institutions, a great paper gets lost to time because it's not picked up and it's not um, part of what is what is known as common thought and common knowledge within an within, within an academic institution. With this way, you, what you can do is you can instantly rate and, and acknowledge um uh papers and be that part of your knowledge management which then leads to much better research going forward uh you can commercialize your ai so um say for instance you had a genetics department and you had a, a third party genetics company that needed your up-to-date information they can use your ai to power their systems uh, and that will instantly put you over other organizations because there's a way to API what you've got into their existing systems and the commercialization of that, the opportunities of that are, are immense. Uh, as a result of which you'll get staff retention. Um, the idea is that you don't lose staff because of the knowledge in their heads. The knowledge in their heads is part of your AI. So the organizations will come directly to you rather than take your staff away from you. This will then lead to increased income for academic organizations and increased wages. So they won't want to go away as well. So this is the future um, to what we see for academic institutions. To summarize, it's it's a move from traditional learning, um, whereby there's a, there's a chalk and talk type approach, to much more of a social learning basis. So a lot of the learning stuff, the traditional learning stuff, such as tutoring and um, uh, lectures, will move much more online, and there'll be much more much more capabilities for more of a social learning. So of social networks have um, the ability to discuss ideas and that will be what uni university is more, more about rather than the traditional t attending le lectures and uh, tutorials. Um, and so academic institutions will move away from teaching and more into research because the AI will be part of the teaching and this 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 feeding of the AI and improving the AI and improving the, 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 the combined knowledge um, will lead to better research as well and increase commercial opportunities. Um, so the future, um, the, Bill Gates said uh, at the end of last year, the AIs will get to that ability to be as good as a tutor as any human ever could. Um, uh, he said that around six months ago, I more than that, probably nine months ago. I believe that we are almost there already. Um, and he said that would be within 18 months. We're here, we're, we're, we're already there in nine. The improvement in AI technology astounds everyone mostly those people even working in AI technology. It's got a self-learning aspect and it's exponential, which basically means that there is, it's pretty limitless in what it can do. So we've got to use this, and we've got to harness this now while we have the opportunity. Um, is it all possible? Uh, just just to show you this pictorially, it's hard to show, it's hard to show you really how AI engines have improved, but let's have a look at how image, en uh, image engines have improved, which use AI. Now, this is an image taken of a blue bicycle in April 2022. Um, uh, it's got artistic, artistic um, uh, things going for it, but it's not, it's not manifestly a blue bicycle. A year later, this is the, this, the same prompt, the outcome from it. What this shows you is how everything is improving, how everything is improving so quickly. Um, and I believe that everything I've been talking about, is, it's, it's, it's possible now and it will get so much better in the next six months, in the next year and onwards. Um, so things aren't going to change. Uh, and I believe this is, this is definitely the future. Um, where to start? As I say, we can do this now. We have the tools to do this now. We have the tools to create e-learning. We have the tools to power uh, a, a chat engine, a tutorial chat engine. And that should all be one thing. The, you know, the, everything should feed into the AI and use that as a basis for tutoring, for creating learning content, et cetera. Um, if you want to find out more, uh, openelms.com is the uh, name of the company, or you could email myself directly. And uh, we would love to we'd love to chat to you, talk to you about the possibilities. Um, but if you want to see it, you see it yourself, um, you can create e-learning within two minutes um, by going to openelms.ai. Um, 
and you can you can put in a, a description of whatever course you want to build and it will generate that from you from, from a general AI engine. Uh, if you log in, uh, if you register, you can produce a slightly larger content course. And again, that's free. Um, but if you want to produce larger courses than that, then there is a, there's a paid, paid model available. But have a chat to us first. We, we, we'd love to speak to you. And we can talk about not just generating e-learning, but how we can use AI to power everything within, within an organization and really just talk about possible. That's all I have to talk about today. Thank you very much for listening.